Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to look at the overclocking abilities of the Socket 754 Athlon 64 3200 Plus. After the Athlon 64 939 and the Socket 775 Pentium 4, this finally felt like an overclock. We will see soon how that went. Into the BIOS we go straight into the Genie settings and after several attempts I decided to go with the multiplier of 9 instead of 10 as I felt this CPU can deliver some better performance for a higher FSB. And in Windows this showed me why this was a bad idea. Overall I could say that this CPU can withstand higher frontside bus speeds than the Athlon XP but it's still nowhere near the Pentium 4 or the Athlon 64 939. Back into the BIOS, we will try again with a 220 frontside bus and a 10 multiplier. We will start as usual with PC Mark and then move to SuperPy where the overclocked version has reached the 40 second mark. And here are the rest of the tests. And now let's look at the graphs. SuperPy shows a slow improvement of the processing power going through the Athlon series. Cinebench doesn't show much in terms of improvement, but at least with overclock the results are getting better. In terms of encoding, Intel is in a class of its own, but at least the progress of AMD is obvious. In PCMark, the CPU score for both Athlon 64 is equal, but in terms of memory it's obvious that the single channel falls a bit behind the dual channel. As for the hard drive performance they are all equal. Sandra shows both uh, Athlon 64 on stock settings being equal to Pentium 4. The floating point is still a weak spot for the AMD, but by the looks of it on stock frequency both Athlon 64 are equal. In terms of RAM performance it's obvious where the dual channel was implemented. Also now I understand why it wasn't that important, so AMD left the dual channel out of the socket uh, 754 CPU, probably shaving cost out of the final product. By the looks of it, uh, memory performance is just as good as the dual channel provided by the Enforce 2 chipset for the Athlon XP. CPU bench is even more accurate showing the progress of the CPUs throughout the sockets. The arithmetic logical unit was an indicator we pinpointed that grew between the Athlon XP and the 949 Athlon 64. In this graph we have the exact trail on display in the ALU section. As for the floating point unit, there is no change. This probably was constant for all AMD CPUs, and the lower value for the Athlon 64 is due to the reduced frequency. As for the internal cache of the CPU, it looks like the socket 754 Athlon 64 is a bit better than the 949. The RAM graphs illustrated the single versus the dual approach to the RAM pairing. Moving on to the graphics tests, I was a little concerned for the socket 754 Athlon as it didn't benefit from the dual channel configuration. At least some of the direct 3D tests showed that this concern was unfounded. Also the next few tests paint the same picture. Even Sirius Sam is no different. The OpenGL tests also show no penalty for the Athlon 64.
launched on the 23rd of September 2003 with a price of $417 just 5 months after the Athlon XP, this was AMD's second attempt to get to the performance rating of 3200. And by the gaming tests, it looks like they reached their target. The CPU in this review was built on the same manufacturing process as the Athlon XP, but AMD decreased the frequency to 2 GHz and also doubled the level 2 cache. Let's not forget that they also added the support for SSC2 instructions and 74-bit uh, instructions. The fact that it only supported single channel may have been a bigger concern than what it actually is. I kind of avoided this platform because of it. And obviously because it was short-lived and it left the impression of a budget-targeted platform. This motherboard changed my opinion. Going back to the CPU, I would venture to say that only 5 months later AMD has reached their target that was a performance rating of 3.2 GHz. Sure, the memory tests are lacking comparing them with the results of the Pentium. And we know now that in another 6 months there will be another Athlon 64 showing the same improvement as this one did over the Athlon XP. I know that AMD released a revised version of this CPU for socket 754 with a better manufacturing process that I suspect is just as fast as the 939 in most of the tests and also when overclocked. Minus the dual channel memory of course. For now I can conclude that the Athlon 64 in this review was a good step in the right direction for AMD and they also validated the approach with the memory controller integrated in the CPU and that there is no need to avoid this platform. If you don't want to go beyond a single core for a retro system and you want a decently powerful system, this may be a good option. And just like the Intel Socket 423, this may even look exotic as both of them were transition platforms and relatively short-lived. Although not a winner in all benchmarks, this may be the CPU to have if you want the CPU with the most potential out of the 2003's lineup. Thank you for watching and see you next time.